HTML frames. This is the fifth presentation and now we'll study a little area that a lot of web designers do not like to use because frames make it difficult for certain people to access the web pages. Uh, there perhaps are better ways of doing this but I want to present this to you so that we'll be complete in what we're doing. Frames require some planning. You have to lay out a special layout page for the frame and then you have to put web pages in each of those frame areas on that layout page. Before you start you really should do a quick sketch of what you want. So let's take a look at some quick sketches here. For your frames you may lay them out either as columns or as rows or as both as in this case. Um, here I have uh, in this first one, let's uh, take a quick look at it here. In this first one here, looking at this one, I have basically one, two, three different frame areas here. Okay? Three frame areas, and those three frame areas each will require a web page to fill them. This one, of course, I have four, an extra one here. A lot of companies use this area up here for a logo of some sort. You could put another one over here. You can divide it into three each. Just depends on what you want in your web pages. You must have a begin and an end tag to do frames. On the layout side, to set up a frame, you have a begin frame set and an end frame set. Okay. You do not have body tags on the layout page. You do have body tags on the pages that will fill the layout page. But the layout page has no body tags at all. The only exception to that is if you're trying to lay out a page which uses what's called the no frames tag. And under that circumstance, you would have a, a situation where you want to lay out your browser page so that in case a browser can't use frames, it can pick this up. That's not so true anymore, but it, it possibly, um, for certain circumstances, in a case where you don't use frames, uh, it's good to have the no frames tag, and then you put your body within the no frames tag. The frame sets you can divide into columns or rows. Now the way you do this, you put the, this is an attribute of the frame set tag, and in that frame set tag, you define the number of columns by putting the number of items in the number list. So as you can see here, we have a columns equals, and then a number list, and basically here's what a number list looks like. You can use exact pixel size, which will keep that part of the frame the same size. You can use a percentage, which will allow it to change as it moves, unless you have the, the no change. And this is advisable using the asterisk. The asterisks mean whatever's left. So with this, I've defined a three-column page. The first one is 20 pixels. The second is half the web page. And the last one takes up whatever's left over. And it's best to do it that way so that you don't get into any problems of coming below. For example, if I push this web page in, 50% and 20 may be too much, and if you put a number there, you'd end up crunching the thing too much. Down here, if we divided the thing into rows, the same concept would apply, a number list. And it could be exactly the same as this. It could have two things. For example, we could just say a 20 and an asterisk, and that would be a two-column list then. I'm sorry, a two-row list down on this one. Frame tags are then used um, to help put an initial frame onto the web page and it defines where that frame is and it defines some other things about the frame. And we only use the beginning tag for that. We do not use an end tag. There are a bunch of attributes that go in the frame tag. For example, frame border. If you say 1, you get a border. If you say 0, you get no border. Uh, the name, and this is a very important one because you should give each frame a name even if you're not going to really use it, just to be consistent. 
frame names are used to direct a certain web page into that particular frame. So you must name frames that you want to put web pages in it. No resize is handy to use because the no resize means the user can't change the size of the frames. They're stuck. They're solid. Scrolling. Put scroll bars on it. Auto is the best thing to use and it's the default. However, if you don't want scroll bars ever to appear, you'd put no. And if you want scroll bars there all the time, whether they're needed or not, you'll put yes. SRC and a URL. That specifies the initial web page to go in that frame. And you put that right in the frame tag. And that brings up a, a, new, a web page into that frame. I'll show you later how to move other web pages into those frames. And this is when we show you. You use a link. You can use a link in one frame to put a web page into another frame, or for that matter, into the same frame. It doesn't matter. Basically, you have the link tag, the um, anchor tag, the A. Then href tells what web page you want to go out and get and put in. And then target. And here's where we're using target equals, and then the name of the frame where you want to place it. So for example, let's say we had a web page out there called Pool HTML, and we wanted to see that that got into a frame that we had named Main. Our link on our page would say Pool, and it would be a hyperlink. When we clicked it, it would go out and get the Pool HTML and load it into the Main frame on our web page. Let's get the idea of the overall look of a frame now, and what it and particularly the layout page. Um, for this particular one, you need four web pages. And I'm going to show you those like this. One web page is needed to fill this one, and I'm going to show you that in more detail later, and that's the one I'm having the links on. Another web page is going to be our heading up here, or our title. And the last web page, this is the main area where we're displaying it, usually the biggest frame on the page. We start by defining it with HTML. And there's an HTML tag there, and there's the end HTML tag here. You can put a header in, and I like to do this because I like to put my title up there in the top of my web page. Now notice, no body tag here, or no end body tag here for that matter. No body tags in this thing. This is the layout page. You have frame sets. In this case, my frame set, I'm going to define my web page as having two rows. One is going to be 100 pixels wide. The other one will be the rest. Asterisk. And here it is. Here's row one right here. It's the aqua one. And then here's row two down here. Now, we're defining row one with this statement here. Frame. We give it a name, we're going to call it heading, and we give it the first web page that's going to go into it, which is going to be the Aqua Heading HTM, and that's what this web page is. This Aqua Heading one is right in here. And so it loads right into that frame area. But this second row, I'm not going to dis define it as a single frame. I'm going to break it up. So I have to use the frame set again, so I'm nesting the frame sets here. And I'm going to break it into two columns. One 25% of the width, and the other the rest, which of course be 75%, but it's best to put the asterisk at least in one area. All right, so now we've got this broken, and as you can see, here's the dividing line, and there's a column here, okay, right in this area, and a column over here in this area. And of course, I've got these loaded with web pages, so let's see how we did that. Well. Again, once you have a frame division area from a frame set, you need to divide it up. And you need to have as many of these statements as you have divided areas up here. So I'm going to call this one links. That would be this yellow one right here. And I'm going to load into it a web page I call links.htm. And there it is, right there. Then this one I'm calling main, this one right over here, the white area. And I'm going to load into it a web page I call layout HTM. Okay. So I've got these two basic web pages loaded into this area, and one basic web page loaded into there. 
as well as having this basic layout page over the whole business. Let's take a look at the links page. Now the links page is going to show us quickly how we do these links and how we get it to load in. I've got two sets of links. If you remember back there I had a couple places. I had the title area and I had the main. These links right here are going to change just the main. So if I look at these links right here, they'll change the main. These links down here are going to change the headings up there in the title area. And let's just look at one quickly to see how that's done. Uh, typical web page, and these web pages must have a body. Okay, and I changed the body background color so we can see the difference. All right, so we've got that going here. Looks pretty nice. I made a list here is how I set this up. So I just made a list. This is an ordered and this is an unordered list just to show you how we use these things sometimes. And in each item of the list, I'm putting an anchor. And this first anchor is to the layout HTM. And I'm making its target main. See where I did that? So when you click the word layout up here, if you click this, it would jump and go out and find the layout HTM web page right there and would put it in the main area not in this area this is the links area remember it would put it in the main area okay look at another one if I click on rows what's going to happen well if I click on rows it's going to go out and get rows HTM which by the way is another web page I've constructed out there and it's going to put it into main Let's look down here at this area. What happens, I've got aqua up there. What happens if I click on pink? Okay, if I click on pink, here's what's going to happen. It's going to go out and look for a web page I have out there called pink heading htm. And it's going to put that web page in the heading area. See, by using target, that's where I tell it to put the particular web page when you click a link. Here's what the aqua heading page looks like up at the top. Simple web page. It has a body, if you'll notice, right here. Body tag there. Okay. And so it has the body and then I just put a heading in it to make it simple. Here is the main web page, one of the ones I did there. And all I did with that one was, again, it has a body. Okay. See it right there? has a body. I made it white. And, of course, I put a heading on it. There's my heading. And then I centered an image on here. And that's the image I centered, just like that. Okay, and that's that web page layout. Pretty simple. The web pages are pretty simple. They're standard, what you've always been doing. You don't have to make them very big. The frame is the thing that's important in this particular assignment. So, let's get to the assignment. Here's what I'd like to have you do. And right following this, I'm going to give you a quick demo and show you this in action. But let's take a look at the assignment first. First, we're going to take a look at the assignment is going to have two rows. So just like before, I had two rows. Here's the first row. There's the second row. Okay. But unlike the one I just showed you, this row up here is going to have two columns. It's going to have a frame area named logo and it's going to have another one called title or you could call a heading if you want to right there then the second row right down here I'm going to break into three areas this one is going to be called links and it's going to be links that change main so you could call it, maybe call it links main this one is the main area where we do most of the displaying of our web stuff and this one right here is going to be links, but it's going to change the logo up here. So the links in here will basically change these. And the links over here will change this main area here. So let's just kind of tally up how many web pages we really need to complete this assignment. Well, we're going to have a links web page. There's only going to be one of those, so I'll put a one here. Okay. And there's only going to be one of these, and you only need one of these, okay? So that makes three so far. 
we need this layout page that's going to be right here that's going to be one okay but we're going to have like I said I want a minimum of three links here to change to three different logos so we're going to have to have three of these up here and then I want a minimum of three links for three different things in here so we'll have to have three different pages in here let's add it up three plus three is six seven eight nine ten so to do this assignment you're going to need ten different web pages okay. and if you want to be extra fancy you can even put a few extras in and change this to change this title <clears throat> here's an example of uh, the web page we were just showing you in this uh, presentation First of all, let's see what happens when I move this thing over here at the right-hand side. I'm going to start squishing it in. Notice, slowly squishing. And you'll notice, you see how things change? The frames are moving in size, okay? And they can reconfigure themselves. Okay, I'm going to bring it back out again. To its original size here. That looks pretty close. All right this area up in here is the um, title area this area is the main right here and this area over here of course is the area that has the headings and I can change the main with these links and I can change the title with these links so let's go ahead and activate this screen now and see how this works right now I have the layout on the screen let's come down to the rows and if I click rows it should load a rose and the rose web page into that frame If I click duck it should load the duck web page into that frame and so on and so forth as I go down through these it will load different web pages that I've created into that frame I can go back to my layout now let's come down to the heading if I click aqua that's what I'm in right now let's go down to light green heading there's light green heading how about pink okay there's our pink heading and yellow heading there we go and back to the aqua heading now if I want to turn the whole page yellow I think butterfly was yellow and heading was yellow and now the whole thing looks yellow but this is the idea of being able to have these links load into different frames on the web page.